Okay, in this video, uh, I'm going to be showing basically uh, the PID loop, a simple PID loop uh, in ladder logic. Uh, so, not the PID E, but this is a, uh, a PID, which is the proportional integral uh, derivative. Uh, basically, uh, just to kind of go over the situation or the, the setup, uh, it's an emulated setup it, and it's a uh, version 20. Not to say that's limited because a PID is a PID, so no matter what version you're running, it's going to act the same just about. So a little bit subtle changes maybe, but uh, I would imagine I think it's between 20 and 30 is the exact same. So uh, a PID E is, is different. Just note that. Um, I just I had a request uh, via email and a couple of comments that ask about a PID loop, so did one. Uh, basically, this is a setup. I can explain the logic real quick. It's a timer, uh, update timer that, that goes in front of the PID loop. Uh, I have the process variable, which is the input to the, the PID loop. Um, basically, that process variable is taking itself um, by an expression and timesing itself by 0.99, plusing itself by the CV, which is the control variable, plus uh, times 0.05 uh, and that's basically keeping this loop running and uh, simulating so it, it did all this this rung right here does rung two is a simulation loop uh, rung three is throwing the PID loop in auto rung four is throwing the PID loop in manual so basically showing uh, uh, forcing a zero into the um, <clears throat> the output Okay, so that would make the PID loop kind of out of control. So real quick, I have a trend. I'm going to run the trend. <clears throat> and we'll make the trend a little bit more user-friendly real quick. Uh, so we'll change the uh, pin, or the uh, min and max, so 600. Okay, so change that. We'll change the... Timing. Well, I want to change the timing to 45 seconds <clears throat> to give a better illustrative value. So, okay. So let's uh, let's change the uh, set point, and I'll show you how this works. So we're going to change the set point, and we'll watch what it does. So you'll see um, it's it's actually traveling down, and the output, uh, which is the PV, right? The PV is actually going down. Um, and it we should be going to 250 now if you notice over here in the corner it it actually overshot so it, instead of going to 250 it actually overshot to 200 and now it's going to kind of work its way back up and I'll, I'll show you this okay so uh, what's happening here is basically it overshot and now it's going to adjust itself back up and when it adjusts itself back up, it will, you know, it, it will get to a closer point, but it will still overshoot a little bit and kind of fine-tune its way back in. Um, so part of this, and I'll explain this to you, <clears throat> part of this is how aggressive the proportional and the integral is compared to each other. But just taking note, it's always the process variable against the set point to get the error which is the driving force of the output based upon your KP which is your proportional gain or your KI which is your um, integral so let's just change the integral for just a, for the sake of argument uh, 0.05 let's put the integral at 0.05 and now let's change the set point to 500 again. Okay, so we're going to change the set point to 500 and we're going to see what this does. Okay, so we're ramping up. Okay, so <clears throat> currently if you watch this upper right hand corner, um, it should be, like I said, it's in the 300 right now. It's going to ramp up to 500, right? Now what we're trying to do is get rid of that overshoot. So there's a couple ways to do this. We can either play with uh, raising the uh, proportional or we can get rid of the uh, integral so maybe our integral was tuned a little high 
uh, meaning the PID was tuned hot. It was going to react um, more rapidly. So if you're not so much worried about speed, you can just derate your integral. Um, if you're worried, worried about speed, then you need to increase the PID or the proportional. And I'll show you that as well. So we're currently mo still moving up. So now notice it's a nice smooth transition. It's not real fast. That's just kind of, this kind of where I go back to talking about if you're not really worried about speed, you can do this matter because now it's going to slowly, slowly, slowly adjust itself up to that 500 mark um, because that took that integral down, um, basically that extra little boost. So if you look at the, the way a PID loop works, uh, the P is the proportional, right, is, is going to go up and do close to a certain point. Now there's going to be a limiting factor, like a, a error in there that it, a percentage that it has to correct. And that, that's where that integral kicks in and kind of gives, drives it closer to it. So now we're, we're still, this is where the integral is, is trying to drive that bus, right? So it, it's trying to get to that, uh, 500 and it, it will, but again, it really, really slow, right? So I'll, I'll, I'll kind of just go, go through that. So you see where it, at 495, 496, and eventually it will get there. So to, for the sake of time, let's do this. Let's change our integral to 10. And let's change the set point to 250. Okay, so now we're going to go back down and let's watch that on the trend. Okay, so again, this is a slower process, a little bit faster than last time, but it's still a slow process. But we don't want to over, the goal is to not really overshoot dramatically, right? It's okay maybe to overshoot a little bit. It depends on your situation. It depends on your, uh, whatever you're trying to control, whether it be like uh, air condition or, or maybe it's a, the heating of a tank or, or water temperature or whatever the case may be. Uh, or if, but if you're trying to fill a valve or if you're trying to fill a vessel, you probably don't want to overshoot too much. So that one, we're aiming at 250. We went to 250. We went 249, 247, 246, 245. Again, I'm looking in this right-hand corner. Uh, 242. So we're still a little bit, um, a little bit aggressive. So we're overshooting. Okay, so we overshot, right? Okay, so now it's going to try to correct itself back, and it will. It will correct itself right back. So if we look at this process variable, it will correct itself back to the point where it goes to 250. Now what I want to do to get it a little bit more exact is I want to change my proportional a little bit. Proportional, and we'll let this settle out. So I can show you real quick before we go changing it back to 500. <clears throat> okay, so now we're going to change it back to 500 and watch how uh, this actually works with that adding a little bit more proportional gain to it. So now we've, we've from the original setup I had in there, right, we're going to actually, we took away a little bit of uh, integral, a little bit too much, so we added a little bit back. Uh, we still, when we did that, we still overshot. So now our option is to add a little bit, a little bit of proportion to it to give it a little bit more gain on it, right? So let's see if we overshoot now. So we're, we're gonna we're gonna tighten up that that area a little bit. That's what should happen. So we're we're going to two, or I'm sorry. 491, 492, 493. So it's it's a lot quicker than it was the original time, but now we're trying to get right at target, and then <clears throat> have it fine. So not overshoot it. And looks like that worked perfectly. <clears throat> okay, so it overshot by one, uh, which is not bad at all for a, a simulated system, right? Um. So you see that was that was basically tuning the uh, proportion, right? So let's let's do let's do us a little favor and let's take out the derivative, right? 
Okay, so let's take on the derivative, and now let's come in and throw it back to 250 and see what it does. Remember, our, our derivative was uh, 0.1, so that's basically our breaking factor. If you would, look at that as like a breaking factor. Like if you're trying to accelerate and accelerate to a certain point, and you kind of get to, you, you really get, to a, a certain point, you, you kind of want to dampen it a little bit. That's it. Look at look at the derivative as like a dampener. Often it's not used. Um, it really depends on your your process. Often it it you know it, people don't use it. That's why they call it a PI loop. Um, it's a PID, uh, and again you will use it in a PIDE. So just keep that in mind. Um, <clears throat> okay, so we're going down to 250. 253, 252, 251, and at this point we don't really need the derivative. Okay. Okay, so let's let's experiment a little bit more, right? Okay, so it did what it's supposed to do. It kind of overshot a little bit, not much, right? Uh, let's take the proportion to 0.12, and then let's take the Set point back to 500. Okay. So now this should be a lot quicker, right? Because we're giving it more proportion. So we're kind of making it accelerate quicker. Um, but let's see if we can control it quicker, right? So that's the goal is can you control it quicker and still hit your accurate point? Um, I feel like we can, but it depends on, again, how what does your process need? What is your pro is your process a slow process? Is it a fast process? Um, sometimes, you know, in some instances you want to really kind of ramp up, get to where you're going, and stay, you know, hit that, that still hit your target right. You know, in some instances, you, you know, you're going really, really slow. You don't really care. You know, you, you can go slower if you want. So we added more proportion, but when we got close, it ended up kind of hurting us, so it slowed down a little bit. Right, so how would we go about correcting that? We would add more. To, um, we would add more integral to that. So if you remember, so right, so it, it basically shot stopped about ten short, and now it, it's still driving up, right? It's still driving and doing its job. It's still doing what it's supposed to. Do. But in this case, we want to have more. So let's take it to uh, back to let's stay uh, not two five. Let's go the integral to two. Okay, so now it's just about at five hundred. You see right here, we're gonna take this back down to two fifty, and this is gonna still be that aggressive setup, right? But we don't want to um, undershoot. So that that's basically what we did. We undershot. Uh, it still got to its set point, but it, it had to use the, the the integral was having to drive it really, really, really slow. And what we want to do is we want to get there faster, but still have that same same control point where we're not overshooting or undershooting too much. So you see, we actually overshot that by 10. We we're supposed to go to 250. We went 240. So 240, and now it's going to drive itself back up to 250. So now it's going to, to 241, 242, 43. So you kind of get where that's going. So that helped a little bit, right? <clears throat> okay, so now let's say, let's take our proportional gain up a little bit. Take our proportional gain up a little bit. Let's take it back to 500. All right, so, so we tuned it really, really low. We tuned it real subtle and it worked perfectly. And we still have those numbers. We can throw them back in. So now it's at, at 250. So let's, let's take it to 500 with our new uh, proportional gain, right? Our proportional gain is again um, <clears throat> is higher than it, what it was on the last one. So let's see what this does. So it's at 240. Two, or I'm sorry, uh, four, 480, 490 coming up. And we got closer that time, right? So 496, 497, 498. 
four ninety nine, five hundred. And to me that to me that one that looked a lot better. It was a lot quicker and it didn't overshoot or undershoot it, it overshot by one, but it, that's really nothing um, to be concerned with, right? <clears throat> so let's keep in mind that was a lot quicker, right? So we actually took this from where it was from uh, uncontrolled at um, 0.15 or 0.50 and this was 0.25 to an uncontrolled loop where it was undershooting and overshooting to a very controlled slow loop which was uh, controlling it by the integral but keeping this basically at a 0.5 so the proportion was at a 0.5 and the integral was at a 0.25 we took the integral down to a point one, and it it hit target. So when it did that, but it was very slow, so we wanted to speed it up, right? So now we're, we've sped up, and now we can easily see that we're going to our set point a lot quicker, right? And we're not actually uh, undershooting or overshooting, so we've, we've actually getting our, to our point a lot quicker. Now, could we do it quicker than that? Yeah, I mean, I'm sure we could. But uh, the point of this illustration in this PID setup, right, is to basically give you um, an understanding of an easy way to tune, um, you know, your your uh, PIDs. Not a PIDE. Don't get me wrong. That's an enhanced PID. Uh, so we will go over that. Uh, but I want to show a, a actual PID. So it actually went to to target overshot just just a tear just a little bit um you know so again so the way this and again let's let's look at the way i have it simulated too i'm taking the process variable right here i'm taking the process variable times 0.99 plus the control variable times 0.05 and then that is giving me my process variable, so it's re-entering that into my process variable. So that's keeping that loop moving up and down. And again, if I threw this in manual, it would go to zero, and it would be an uncontrolled loop, right? Because I'm manually controlling it at that point. So you see this, this process variable is going haywire. Now if I throw it back in auto, it's going to control right back, and the trend will show that. So the trend, of course, I have it blocked at 150, so it'll come back as soon as it gets above 150. So this is now 120, 125. So as soon as it gets back at 150, you should start seeing it. But the point I'm trying to get at is, so I drove it to zero, and then I let auto take it back over. So auto should bring it right back up to 250, and should be fine. So. Uh, Real quick, that was just, you know, some sample logic. You just kind of put together um, real kind of just to uh, help you understand the way this thing's set up um, or the way it's done. I'll probably have like a version two of this to kind of give uh, a little bit more illustration. But, you know, just as far as the way that goes, um, this kind of gives you exactly what it's doing. You know, so again, just keep in mind your uh, process variable against your set point will give you your driving force of how you have it's going to be your output but it's going to be the way your tuning constants are so you're again your proportional gain your kp your integral gain which is your ki and your derivative gain or time which is your uh, kd so look at that like a dampening um this is a proportion, it's like almost hitting the gas, and this is kind of like slowly letting off the gas a little bit. So, um, but still has a driving force, right? So, um, the way I have this set up is a PID equation independent. Um, the control action is set P, uh, which is the set point, uh, minus the P PV, uh, derivative of the PV. Uh, loop update time is in uh, a tenth of a second. Um, the high and low uh, alarms. I don't have any of the alarms set. Um, that's again, you can set alarms to have your system go into alarm if you need to. Um, the process variable setup, just like you show, shown. This is just a rough setup for just a simple example, right? 
Um, again, we can kind of go over stuff like this on a different video. Uh, I just wanted to show a little bit of way to a way to tune this stuff and, and the way to get it a little bit more aggressive. So we kind of hit about 20 minutes worth of video, so I'm going to go ahead and cut this one short. Um, also, too, I have you know I have my motion uh, motion mastery course out. Um, on Udemy, so you feel free to to get that, and I'll, I have that I'll have that link below in case you guys are kind of interested in that too. But um, also, I'm going to be putting together some more courses and stuff like that too, um, to kind of show programming all together, uh, different, and just so many different angles and the best practices that I use. Um, but I just wanted to kind of show this one was more of itemized for a couple people that were asking for PID loop example. Um, not a PIDE because I, I, I will do a PIDE as well. This is a PID loop, uh, very simple set, uh, setup, um, very simple controls, uh, but it does kind of show you, you know, exactly what you need to do, and it shows you um, how to tune it as well. I thought that was that was pretty important, and then you know, having it in a trend, you know, seeing it, seeing what it does, I think that you know that kind of helps out too. So. Again, um, not to take up too much more of your time, because I know uh, I know when I'm watching videos, it's, it's kind of it's that, that timing is, is always crucial. So thank you for your time, and um, I'll have the links below. Uh, you know, hit that like button if you like it, and uh, leave me suggestions, stuff you want to see. Again, I, this was done off somebody's suggestion, so I want to keep building off that. So um, it's just kind of helping out and uh, spreading knowledge through the community. So Again, thank you, and uh, feel free to check out my website at uh, onlineplcsupport.com. Okay, again, uh, thank you for your time, and we'll have another one come to you.